to Sam CX ne the Next Generation series where we interview trailblazers in the field of STEM. My name is Anaya Coase, and this afternoon we'll be speaking with African American architecture Melody Ray and Kelly Lyons, author of Dr of Dream Builder. I would like to ask you a series of questions, starting off with telling a little bit about yourself and your journey into into STEM and architecture. Melanie Ray? Sure, uh, thanks Anaya. Um, so as you mentioned, my name is Melanie Ray. I'm an architect uh, working in Baltimore, Mar Maryland, um, currently working on housing and mixed use projects um, at a firm called Hort Copeland Mox downtown. Um, I got introduced to architecture pretty early. Uh, my father is actually a licensed architect as well. And so growing up, I remembered um, seeing his drawings and, and back then they did everything by hand. Um, so he had a basement full of documents that I just was really interested in um, looking through and, and curious to see what exactly he did. Um, so fast forward to high school, um, I, it came time to decide like what path I was going to take for my career um, with my major in school, um, looking at colleges, and I had every intention to actually go into engineering um, until I realized that I wanted to be a little bit more creative, use a little bit more of the other side of my brain. Um, and I looked back to architecture as a way to achieve that. So. Um, I went to Penn State in 2010 and graduated in 2015, and I've been practicing architecture ever since. Okay, Miss Kelly? Yes, um, I'm Kelly Starling Lyons. I'm a children's book author. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina, and my connection to STEM started whenever I was a kid. I loved science. My favorite Christmas present was my chemistry set. I would do kitchen chemistry and um, I had a telescope and all these kinds of things. Um, but as I got older, writing was something I kept coming back to. The cool thing about writing is I can still include science. So that's been really fun. Um, I have a chapter book series about a character named Data Jones who loves science just like I did, who goes into everything from uh, collecting rocks to I'm working on one now, uh, about space to the book we're going to talk about today, which is Dream Builder, the story of architect Philip Freelon. So I'm really a big fan of people in the STEM field, and I try to celebrate Black trailblazers and center Black kids that are interested in STEM and some of the books that I write. Okay, Miss Miss Ray, I heard that many people, many people or architects like to describe themselves by, by putting their passion into their work. How do you incorporate STEM and, and your aspects of your personal life into your work? So I'll, I'll start with like kind of a, a general answer and how architects incorporate STEM into what we do. So I mentioned that uh, there's a little bit of right brain, left brain interaction um, as an architectural designer. And so every day we're challenged with different problems uh, that we as designers have to solve. And the way that we go about it is maybe using um, some elements of STEM like math, environmental science, uh, understanding climate and climate change, um, material science, um, measurements, geometry, algebra. Um, there's a lot of aspects within STEM that we then kind of marry to things like material color, um, how you feel in a space, the size of spaces, the size of buildings, where certain things go. And so we use all of those strategies to come up with, you know, how buildings and neighborhoods and communities and even cities ultimately uh, end up looking. Um, with my practice and, and what I do, um, I'm really passionate about creating um, equitable spaces. So communities and, and buildings and spaces that anyone can enjoy regardless of where you come from. And so I enjoy working on things like community development projects where you get the opportunity to go into communities and talk with the residents and get a real sense of what it is that 
they would like to see and use our skills to try and translate um, that information into the projects that can directly benefit them. Okay, thank you. Ms. Ms. Lyon, yes. how, how did you come interested in writing a book, writing a book about Philip Freeland's efforts in designing the African American Museum? And what is the message that you want to send to your readers out there? Great question. Before I tell you that, I should mention that there's going to be a giveaway of Dream Builder. So thank you so much to STEM CX for making this possible. I'm going to be giving away 50 copies. So put your name in the chat to have a chance to win. Uh, now, how I got interested in his story, I live in Raleigh. Mr. Freelon had a practice and, and has his family in Durham, which are, you know, kind of neighboring cities. And from when I moved here, it seemed like his uh, genius was all around. So everything from parts of the airport to the Durham Bull Stadium to the transportation complex in Durham, he designed. So I kept hearing his name and seeing these beautiful um, monuments to his work. And then as I was in the state longer and began to travel, I would go to museums that he also designed. He designed the International Civil Rights Museum in Greensboro. He designed the Gantt Center in Charlotte. And I was just really so um, impressed and inspired by the way he used his um, gifts and his uh, brilliance to bring parts of the Black experience to life through um, design. I thought that was just really in, incredible of him. And then I read about in the newspaper here that he was going to be the lead architect for the National Museum of African American History and Culture. And I thought, wow, you know, to have somebody in our community, in the Triangle, who has this, you know, wonderful um, mission to create this, you know, national museum. And I was blessed enough to be there on opening day in the crowd. So this really was something personal to me. Um, as it turned out, as a writer, I keep kind of a running list of ideas. So Mr. Freeland has been on my idea list for a long time. And an editor reached out to my agent and said she'd love someone to write a story about an architect who designed the National Museum in D.C. And I said, hey, I have somebody, Phil Freeland. <laughs> so um, it was just a, a, you know, kind of the right, right moment came. And I feel so honored to have had the chance to sit down and interview him. I actually got to go to his house, spend time with him and his wife, Nina, who's a Grammy nominated uh, singer and com composer and got to hang out with them and hear about his childhood and hear about his journey to architecture. So I was just so um, in inspired and wanted to share that story with kids. And what I want readers to take away, especially for my young readers, it's to know that you can do anything. One of the things I learned through interviewing him is one of his early challenges was he struggled with reading. Mr. Freelon is brilliant. I mean, he, he was what you call, call a star architect, so a star plus architect. Um, and for kids to know that you don't just, you know, wake up with everything perfect, that there's a journey, there's an arc, there's a, that there's kind of um, things you have to work on along the way. So I want kids to know that. I want them to also know that, you know, when they're in their communities and they're walking around, there are heroes, everyday heroes that live where they are, that look like them. And I think it's really important for us to see our own faces and people that we're holding up as leaders so that we know that you know, we can aspire to be whatever we want. Mr. Freelon was a founding member of the 100 Black Men chapter here. And their um, motto is, what they see is what they'll be. So it's really important for kids to look at him and his life story, to look at how he took his strengths in art, math, and science. And he was able to use that in service of a greater good. He really used who he was, his love of Black people, his love of Black culture, his brilliance in the STEM field to give back to us. And so that's what I want kids to know, that who you are is enough, 
your lives matter, and you have the power to be a dream builder, just like Phil Freelon. I'm pretty sure you all agree that people want to put their best step forward when it comes to achieving success. What do you believe are the necessary skills, attributes, and abilities that people will need that's essential for success? There's a lot of different tools and a lot of different skills that we all can continue to work on. Um, I think as it relates to architecture, um, you know, one of the biggest skills or abilities um, is the ability to work in a team um, and to have teamwork. You know, we are always working with other engineers, other architects, other designers, interior designers. There's, there's so many levels of complexity to our projects. And so being able to hear and listen to other people and communicate um, within that team is really important to be able to, to develop that skill. Um, and also problem solving, um, being able to look at an issue and understand that there's a way that um, it can be solved, addressed, or um, start to break it down um, with methods of design. Um, we see you know, ugly buildings as opportunity zones, opportunities for us to be able to do something beautiful and to do something um, as impactful um, as Phil Freelon, as uh, Kelly was just mentioning. And so uh, there's, those are kind of like the softer skills, but on the other hand, there's also some more technical skills that I think some people, um, they assume that all architects can draw really well. Um, not necessarily, sometimes it's just how um, finding a way for you to express your creativity, um, whether it be through uh, computer modeling nowadays, painting, sketching, um, other ways of creativity. Um, so, you know, being able to continue to develop those skills uh, are really important. And if you ever had the chance to speak with anybody who's inspired to pursue a career related to your position, what will be some words of encouragement and motivation you'll give to them? Looking back, it's really important, especially for us as Black women to be able to find ourselves in that profession. Um, I think there's a number of organizations and people out there that are making sure that this is possible, that we do see ourselves in the field of architecture. Um, because it's never too soon to start finding a mentor or ask for help or, or doing your own research to get an understanding of what it's like to be um, an architect. And it, it's so great um, to have Ms. Kelly on here because uh, Phil Freelon was one of the architects that I found when I was in school. And I was like, this guy is awesome. This is exactly <laughs> <laughs> what I want to do when I get older. So um, being able to see uh, such a successful architect um, coming from, you know, a similar background as me was really important to be able to, um, you know, succeed in that profession. And so, you know, if you don't see yourself, whether it be in architecture or in other profession, you know, fight to, to get ourselves represented um, within that and ensure that, you know, our voices are heard and our opinions matter within the practice. Thank you. Well, that about to wrap up all the questions I have for this session. Thank you for listening to our interview today. Please put your name in the chat and email us at stemcx at gmail.com for your free autograph copy of Ms. Mrs. Lyon's book. Thank you for, for joining me this afternoon with the STEM, with the STEM CX Next Generation Series.